When we move our body parts like mouth, head, arms, hands and fingers, etc., then our body may remain at the same place. But when we walk by using legs, then we move our whole body from one place to another. The ability of a human being, or an animal, to move its body from one place to another, is called locomotion. Human beings, and other animals, show two types of body movements. Movements of the body parts, like mouth, head, backbone, arms, hands, legs and foot, extra. Movement of the whole body from one place to another, which is called locomotion. In order to understand how the movement of our body parts and locomotion takes place, we should first study the bones present in our body, which form a skeleton, the various types of joints which exist between the bones, and the muscles which make the bones move at joints. The skeleton consists of skull, backbone, ribs, breastbone, shoulder bones, hip bone, arm bones and leg bones. A simple diagram of the human skeleton showing the main bones is given in figure 1. We will now describe the human skeleton briefly. The human skeleton consists of a straw in backbone which has skull at its top end. The skull has eye sockets, an upper jaw, and a lower jaw in it. Ribs are attached to the upper part of backbone forming a rib cage. At the lower end of backbone is a wide and straw in structure called hip bone. Just below the neck, there are shoulder bones on both the sides of the skeleton. The shoulder bones consist of two bones, collar bone and shoulder blade. The scientific name of collar bone is clavicle and that of shoulder blade is scapula. The upper limb of human body from the shoulder to the hand is called an arm. Each arm consists of three parts, upper arm, lower arm, or forearm, and hand the upper arm is from shoulder to elbow. The lower limbs of the body on which a person walks or stands are called legs. Each leg consists of three parts, upper leg, lower leg and foot. The upper leg is from hip to knee. The upper leg consists of a single bone called femur. Femur is commonly known as thigh bone. The lower leg is from knee to ankle. Functions of skeleton. Skeleton holds the whole body together and gives it a shape. Skeleton protects many delicate internal organs of the body, such as brain, heart, lungs, liver and spinal cord, from outside damage. Skeleton provides numerous points for the attachment of muscles of the body along with muscles. Skeleton helps in the movement of body parts and locomotion, walking, etc. Skull The bony part of our head is called skull. The skull is made of 22 bony plates joined together. Our brain is inside the skull in its upper part. The brain is made of soft tissue which could be easily damaged without a hard covering. The bones of skull form a straw in case around the brain. In this way, skull protects the brain. The lower part of skull contains the face bones, including nose bone. The skull also protects the main sense organs like eyes, ears and nose. Functions skull protects the brain. Skull protects the sense organs of the face, like eyes, ears and nose. Skull gives shape to our head. Backbone. Hollow, rod-like structure running from the neck to the hips, inside our body. The scientific name of backbone is vertebral column. Backbone forms the main supporting structure of the body, or skeleton. Backbone is not a single bone. Backbone is made up of 33 small bones placed one over the other. The small bones which make up the backbone are called vertebrae between the various vertebrae of backbone are the discs of cartilage, soft bone. These discs allow the vertebrae to move slightly and enable the backbone to bend forwards and backwards. Our backbone supports the head at its top. The shoulder bones, rib bones and hip bone are all joined to the backbone. Each vertebra has a hole in it. Due to this, there is a hollow center, or cavity, inside the backbone. The spinal cord passes inside the hollow cavity of the backbone. Function backbone provides main support to the body. Backbone supports the head at its top. Backbone attaches shoulder bones, ribs and hip bone. Backbone protects the spinal cord. Rib cage. Ribs are the curved bones in our chest. Ribs exist in pairs. 
There are 12 pairs of ribs in the chest of our body. There is a long backbone at the back of our body. There is also a small bone called breastbone in the chest region, in front of our body. One end of all the ribs is joined to the backbone and their other end is joined to the breastbone. In this way, all the rib bones, a part of backbone, and the breastbone, join to form a bony. The hollow, bony structure formed by the ribs is called rib cage. Some of the important internal organs of our body such as heart, lungs and liver lie inside the stroin. Bony rib cage. The rib cage protects the delicate internal organs like heart, lungs and liver. The rib cage also takes part in our breathing movements. Functions. Rib cage protects the internal organs of the body such as heart, lungs and liver. Rib cage takes part in our breathing movements. Shoulder bones. Shoulders are that part of the body, or skeleton, to which our arms are attached. The human body has two shoulders, one on each side of the neck. There are two shoulder bones, collar bone and shoulder blade. The collar bone is a long, curved bone. One end of the collar bone is attached to the shoulder blade and the other end of collar bone is fixed to the breast one of rib cage, for support. Collar bone keeps the shoulders apart. The shoulder blade is a large and flat triangular bone. The shoulder blade is attached to backbone by muscles to allow the free movement of the shoulder. Each shoulder blade has a cup-shaped socket. The upper arm fits into the socket of shoulder blade forming ball and socket joint. The main functions of the shoulder bones are the following. Collar bones on the two sides of the neck keep our shoulders apart. Shoulder blades attach the arms to our body. Shoulder blades provide sites for muscle attachments which move the arms, neck and upper part of our body. Hip bone. The hip bone forms a large, basin-shaped frame at the lower end of the backbone, to which the legs are attached. The hip bone is also known as pelvic bone, or pelvis. Hip bone is not a single bone. It is made up of a number of bones fused together by fixed joints. The hip bone has two sockets, hollow spaces, on the two sides of its lower part. The thigh bones of our legs are joined to the hip bone by the ball and socket joints. Functions Supports and protects the lower organs of the body such as intestines, urinary bladder and internal sex organs. Attaches the legs to body. Provides sites for the attachment of muscles that move legs, hips and trunk. Hand bones. Our hand is made up of three parts, wrist, palm and fingers. The wrist consists of eight small bones known as carpals. The palm of hand is composed of five longer bones called metacarpals. The fingers, including thumb, are made of jointed bones called phalanges. There are three bones, or phalanges, in each finger but the thumb has only two bones, or phalanges. The wrist bones, carpals, form movable joint with the bones of forearm. Due to this our wrist is flexible. The palm bones, metacarpals, form movable joints with fingers. The finger bones, phalanges, form movable joints among themselves. There are five fingers in our hand including the thumb. The thumb is shorter than other fingers. Cartilage Cartilage is a firm but flexible material found at some places in the skeleton. Cartilage is much softer than bone. Cartilage can be bent without breaking. In fact, Cartilage is a kind of softer and elastic bone. Cartilage is present in the following places in our body. Cartilage is present in the pinna of ears, upper part of ears. Cartilage is found at the end of nose. Cartilage is found on the end of bones where they meet one another at a joint. Cartilage is also found on the ends of bones where they meet one another at a joint. Cartilage is smooth. The layer of smooth cartilage reduces friction and allows the ends of bones to move easily over each other without damaging them. Thus, cartilage is found in the joints of our body. Discs of cartilage are present between the various small bones, vertebrae, of the backbone. The presence of cartilage discs between vertebrae makes the backbone flexible, so that it can bend. The cartilage discs also absorb the shocks when we run, jump, or do other such activities. Joints. The place where two, 
or more, bones meet in the skeleton is called a joint. Several types of joints occur in the human skeleton. Most of the joints allow the bones to move. The amount of movement depends on the type of joint. Thus, joints of the bones help in body movements types of joints. There are different types of joints in the human skeleton, or human body, to help us to carry out different kinds of movements or other activities. The main types of joints in the human body are hinge joints, ball and socket joints, pivot joints, fixed joints. Let us start with the hinge joints. A hinge joint allows the movement of bones in only one direction, forwards and backwards. In a hinge joint, the movement of bones is restricted to one direction by the shape of the ends of the bones which form the joint, and by the ligaments which hold the bones together at the joint. In our body, hinge joints occur at elbow, knee, knuckles, finger joints, and jaw. In other words, elbow, knee, knuckles, finger joints, and jaw are hinge joints. Ball and socket joints. In the ball and socket joint, one end of the bone has a round shape like a ball, which fits into a socket, hollow space, in the other bone. The ball type end of one bone can turn freely in the socket of the other bone. So, in the ball and socket joint, the bones can be turned in any direction, forwards and backwards, side to side, and even rotated. The ball and socket joints occur at the shoulder and hips in our body. A ball and socket joint allows much more movement of bones than a hinge joint. Pivot joint. In a pivot joint, a cylindrical bone turns in a ring-type bone. The pivot joints allow rotation around an axis. A pivot joint exists between our skull and the top vertebra of backbone. A pivot joint exists between our skull and neck, or a pivot joint exists between our head and neck. The pivot joint between the skull and neck allows our head to bend up and down and turn from side to side. The pivot joint in the forearm makes us turn our forearm to hold the palm of hand up or down. From this discussion we conclude that pivot joints occur in the neck and forearm. Fixed joints. In some joints, the bones are held so tightly together that they cannot move at all. Such joints are called fixed joints. In fixed joints, the bones are held very firmly together by strong fibers. The fixed joints are immovable joints. The function of fixed joints is to provide strength and support to the body, or to protect delicate organs, like brain, which cannot withstand any kind of deformation. Fixed joints occur in our skull. The play-type bones of our skull are held together by fixed joints and cannot move at all. This makes the skull very strong. The movement of body parts in human beings is brought about by the alternate contraction and stretching of the muscles attached to the movable bones of the skeleton. When muscles pull on the bones, by contracting, they produce movements such as moving the head, bending of arm, straightening of arm, walking or running, etc. The contraction of muscles is controlled by the brain. Bending and straightening of arm. Our arm consists of two parts upper arm and lower arm, which are joined at the elbow. The upper arm has one bone. The top end of upper arm bone is joined to shoulder blade by a ball and socket joint. The lower arm has two bones. The upper arm bone and lower arm bones are joined at the elbow by a hinge joint. The upper arm bone has a pair of muscles called biceps and triceps on its two sides. When we want to bend the arm, the biceps muscle contracts, it becomes shorter and fatter. The contraction of biceps muscle pulls the lower arm bones due to which the lower arm moves up. Biceps muscle is called flexor muscle because it flexes, bends, the arm. When we want to straighten the arm, the triceps muscle contracts. The contraction of triceps muscle pulls the lower arm bones at the end due to which the lower arm moves out and straightens. Triceps muscle is called extensor muscle because it extends, straightens, the arm. Thus, by the alternate contraction and relaxation of biceps and triceps muscles, we can bend or straighten the arm. Movement in animals. Cockroach has six legs, 
three legs on each side of its body. The cockroach moves, or walks, on the ground by using its legs. Each leg of cockroach consists of stiff, hollow tubes joined together. The legs of cockroach can be moved easily by the muscles. The muscles which move the legs of cockroach are attached to the inside of the exoskeleton. The flexor muscles bend the legs whereas extensor muscles straighten the legs and make the cockroach move, or walk. A cockroach has two pairs of wings attached to its breast by flight muscles. The cockroach flies in air by moving its wings up and down rapidly with the help of flight muscles. When the wings of cockroach move down, they push on air downward and backward. The downward push on air lifts the cockroach up into air, and the backward push on air makes it move forward. The birds can fly because their bodies are adapted for this purpose. The main adaptations which have been made in the bodies of birds by nature to enable them to fly are the following. Their forelimbs are modified to form wings for flying. Their flight feathers provide a large flat surface which is light but strong. Their bones are hollow and light. Their bodies are streamlined and extremely light. They have powerful flight muscles. In birds, the muscles for flying act on the wings. One pair of muscles pulls the wings down and the other pair of muscles pulls the wings up. When a bird moves its wing down, it is called a downstroke. And when the bird moves its wings up, then it is called an upstroke. The birds move their wings up and down quickly by the rapid contractions and relaxation of their flight muscles. The earthworm's body has two types of muscles circular muscles and longitudinal muscles. When circular muscles contract, they make the segments of earthworm's body long and thin. And when longitudinal muscles contract, they make the long and thin segments of earthworm's body short and fat again. An earthworm moves by lengthening and shortening its body alternately by using the circular muscles and longitudinal muscles, respectively. The tiny bristles on the underside of earthworm's body help in gripping the ground when a part of its body moves. The snail moves with the help of a large, disc-shaped muscular foot. This happens as follows. There are two sets of muscles in the foot of snail which contract and expand alternately, producing a kind of wave effect, from back to front. A series of waves in the muscles of foot make the snail move forward. Snails are gastropods which means belly-footed animals. The movement of snail is called creeping. In a way, the movement of a snail is similar to that of an earthworm. The fish has streamlined body. The body of fish tapers at both ends, being thin in front, thick in middle, and again thin at the back. This body shape is called streamlined. Due to streamlined shape, Water can easily flow around the body of fish and offers least resistance to the movement of fish. The fish has flexible backbone. Due to flexible backbone, the fish can bend its body easily from side to side to move through water. The fish has powerful body muscles. The powerful body in moving its tail on both sides. The fish has fins. The thin and flat projections on the body of fish are called fins. The fins help the fish in steering balancing and stopping in water. The tail fin also helps in moving the fish forward in water. The body of a snake is long and cylindrical. The snake has a long and flexible backbone which makes its body bend easily to form loops or curves. It has also strong muscles connected to its skeleton. Snakes do not have legs, even then they move quite fast. Snakes use their whole long and flexible body to move from one place to another. Snakes have several ways of moving about. We will describe the most common way of movement in snakes. A snake moves forward by moving its body sideways in the form of many loops and pushing against the ground with the underside of moving loops. A snake contracts and relaxes the muscles on the two sides of its body alternately to form many loops for curves in which different parts of the snake's body are moving to the left side and right side at the same time. Each sideways moving loop of snake's body pushes back against the ground and gives the snake a forward push. The resultant push of all the loops of snake's body make the snake move forward very fast.